Oh yeah, so this is something that used to annoy me a lot, and I found difficult to do. Um, but in the process of investigating what to do over the top of it, it opened up a few doors in my mind, okay? So, um, the basic problem is that there is this progression which crops up an awful lot, especially in earlier jazz tunes, which goes like this. So I'm on key, in the key of C, and I go, for example, um, C major, C sharp 7, so 1, 1, 7, and F major, or F7 sometimes, and it goes up to F sharp diminished 7, and then, and then often there's a turn around after that. But let's make the F, F sharp bit, which we're interested in. Now, um, I used to hate soloing over this progression because I saw it as being a difficult thing to get because diminished chords are quite annoying. And most diminished chords in progressions I had come across before, such as this, this sort of thing, for example. To be understood, that diminished chord can be understood as being a, 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 like a A7 flat 9 chord, so that, that, that means I can go... So I can treat it as a 5-1 um, a or a 2-5-1 into, into D minor, right? You can't do that with this diminished chord, because it resolves not to the expected... G7. It can do sometimes, but more often than not it resolves back to C. So in fact that F sharp goes up to G, which is the fifth of the chord, right? And there's a lot of diminished chords which function in a similar sort of way in the swing repertoire. And the more you look out for them, the more you see them and you realise they're the ones that are always a pain in the bum, okay? Um, I'm not going to cover all of these examples today, I'm just going to cover this particular one because this is like the iconic chord progression of uh, early swing and so on. This is... Um, uh, so, an important realisation, first of all, was the fact that, and I got this from Jonathan Stout's blog, and, and if, you ever get, if you're interested in sort of learning more about swing guitar, Jonathan Stout's blog is a really good resource. I mean, he's, a, he's, he's developed into a, a fearsome early jazz player. Uh, he's really good, like great swinging um, guitar player, completely in the style. That's all he's into as far as I can tell. He just lives and breathes kind of pre-war jazz guitar and he's great at it and he's sort of built up a reputation as a player of that style. So definitely check him out and check out what he has to say about um, these styles of guitar. And what, what Jonathan said, which is uh, particularly useful actually, was that um, in fact these two chord progressions, um, C, C7, F, F sharp diminished and C, C7, F, F minor, usually F minor sixth, C major, are actually doing the same job, they're interchangeable. And then I remembered back to rhythm changes, and my problem with rhythm changes was always that I used to play this variant that would go like this. So it'd be one, six, two, five, three, six, two, five, and then it'd be one, one, seven, and then four, and then uh, maybe flat seven, seven, or four minor, depending on you know what I felt like at that time. And then back to one. And I, I, I used to get, and this is something I learned from the real book actually, from the, from the new real book, but my friend always played, you know, the same turnaround. But then he would play B flat, B flat seven, E flat, and then E diminished. And I was like, oh, what's that? You know, I don't understand how those how those can both be rhythm changes because E diminished has nothing to do with E flat minor six, right? They're just from a chord scale point of view, this is completely different. So I still, even though I was, you know kind of down on the whole chord scale thing, I was still thinking vertically, I was still thinking that everything has to be related vertically. Um, so that made me go, ah, that was like a eureka moment. So I thought, oh, well, that explains why I was so confused about rhythm changes. And then also I realised it happens in blues. Like, you can go, uh, in, in, in a blues you can do this, you can go... both of these progressions I knew already were just related to one four five chord progression of traditional blues. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, e, e flat seven, right in this key, and back to B. So one, four, one, and five. And so I mean all those other governs that we put in is basically just going to five. And then it goes back to one and the original version of the blues, like jazz blues, we don't have that four chord in afterwards. So that means that I could relate this to one Four, one. And then the other thing that happened was I um, started looking into this book called uh, Harmony with Lego Bricks by Conrad Cork, and he calls these things four and back. 
There's other names for them as well. I think in gypsy jazz circles they're called Christoph, I believe. And um, please correct me if I'm wrong. And then I've also heard them referred to as the horse in uh, swing circles. So they, they have different names, but the progression has the same function. So really, all this diminished chord is doing in the C, C7, F, F sharp diminishes. It's kind of acting as a gateway from the F chord back to the C chord. So the next question comes, well, that's all very well, but what do um, actual people do over that chord? And of course, my, my approach conventionally was like, well, I'll just play a scale over it, something that sounds good, that sounds good to me. But as I got more into the tradition, I was interested in sort of finding out what other musicians did. And this is obviously the best thing to do. So really go out and listen to the records, work out what people do and switch the video off now. If you do that, I'll be really happy. But if you want to carry on, I can give you a few pointers. So in fact, um, if you check out Lester Young's solo on Lady Be Good, um, it has two instances of these solos. And Lester Young does one of two things. The simpler thing he does, I'm going to transpose this to key of C to make it easier, is he actually plays like an F f sits kind of thing. I mean, this is a with a major seventh as well, passing major seventh on the F, right? And he ignores the diminished altogether. So he goes, so he might play something like that. And then maybe uh, this kind of thing. That's the kind of thing he does. So what he's doing really is just. Um, outlining the very basic chords, the, um, the C, the F, and then in this particular part of the tune there's a, a 2-7, which in this key would be D7, G7 as well. And it, you know, on, on the G, on the C7 he uses... Sorry. That's what I meant to play, which is the... Um, depending how you look at it, either the F sharp... Uh, sorry, it's D7, F sharp half... Uh, F sharp half diminished or um, A minor sixth chord. Okay, so that, that's that's the relationship you use for that. But uh, over, over the diminished, you just basically ignores it. And actually, they don't really play it in the rhythm section either. And that's because it's kind of more of a bass line thing. If I play, uh, there's more chords there of that one and that one. Boom, lower neighbor, boom, lower neighbor to the fifth of the C. So you can ignore those chords as passing chords. That's an interesting point of view, and that's what Lester sometimes do. And the other thing that Lester sometimes do does, which I think is really cool, is he just plays the he just plays the F minor, and the F minor is associated with the other bass line going down. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, which is a really common swing cliche, right? So that's C, B flat, A, A flat, G, and the chord progression associated with is this. Okay. If I do the other way, you can get that version. So if you put both together, um, you can get this. Which is quite fun. And then, I suppose it just goes to the fifth together, right? Contrary motion. But those two melodies, kind of, you can hear them in bass sides, you can hear them in lines in jazz. They just follow through the whole thing. So by actually, by doing this, by going doing something like that over if that makes any sense, I'm seeing the bass line against it. That actually almost acts as a kind of contrary line, so that actually is more interesting than following the changes anyway. So, in summary, if you see this, don't be afraid to play this. Which is the F minor. Prominent A flat going to G. Now I checked out Sonny Rollins' solo on St. Thomas, which has exactly this chord progression towards the end. It's pretty fast. So the progression um, towards the end of the song goes. Now, I don't know about you, but I always found that quite tricky because it's quite fast. Sonny Rollins, every single time almost, nails A flat over the top of that chord. So he's thinking like Lester, and he probably got the idea from Lester as well. Um, of playing the F minor chord over the F sharp diminished. It works great. That's not something they teach you in chord scale theory. <laughs> and the reason why it works is, of course, that chord is serving the same horizontal function as the F sharp diminished, which is that it is a passing chord going from the four back to the one. So you can be quite loose about it. 
So um, what I might do is I might set up a, at some point, I might do a, a little uh, backing track just to demonstrate how these sound over the top. But I would play around with this yourself and see, see how you get on with it. The other approach is, again, just to ignore the F-sharp diminished, but instead of playing an F6 or an F-7, play an F-dominant 7th, and this is what Charlie Parker often did. So he might go into 4, so that kind of thing. So it's going... Uh, I mean, that sounds more kind of treading even. We're obviously using the E-flat over the F-sharp diminished, and that works great as well. So you can basically use that kind of sound. Um, if you just look, listen to Parker and you look carefully at Parker's solos, you'll see that's what he does more often than not over that progression. And that progression crops up a lot in his music because he's very often playing the blues or he's playing um, rhythm changes. And sometimes he uses the minor variant as well. He's an avid student of Lester Young, of course. So he'll do that as well. So basically what I'm saying is that these are completely interchangeable. Um, let me just sort of come up with a sort of bebop line which kind of so what I'm doing there is I'm just playing this sort of turnaround thing. I'll play again. Uh, so I'm just doing that. I'm just playing the E flat. And that gives you enough voice leading through the chord progression so they can hear it. Um, this is all linked, by the way, to my line cliches lesson, which you might want to check out. It's a similar sort of thing. Um, by using these and this, sorry, I'm sort of invoking a line cliche through the progression. And the, the line cliche also has maybe a chord progression associated with it, like one of these. But it all comes from the voice leading outwards rather than the chords going into voice leading, which is a little bit the contrary to the way a lot of people think. So basically, if you see an F-sharp diminished chord in one of those progressions, or whatever it is in that particular key, you can always play the four chord. You can play four major, four seven, or you can play four major going to four, four minor if you want. And it'll all sound great, provided you resolve back to one with a, you know, a positive, a positive um, rhythm. Now the uh, last thing which is really nice is um, actually uh, I'm going to take this from uh, Parker's head on confirmation, so the, the tune he wrote over these changes. So it goes to B flat seven. It's originally in F major, so the, the tune goes. And then it goes. Aha, so B flat. Okay, so. <laughs> And this is rather embarrassing, so I apologise about this. But I originally thought, oh well, this is this is interesting, isn't it? Because he's using these chord tones from B flat being F, A flat, B flat, and he's also putting a flat nine in there as well, which could give you the diminished sound. Of course, I was being really stupid because what this actually is a blues scale. It's an F blues scale. Every guitarist knows that. So. But it's kind of the same thing. The, what the F blues scale does really well is it actually that blues lick gives you the sound of this progression. Okay, so anytime you see one of these things, like if I transpose it back to the key of C, and we go F7, F sharp diminished, well, we've always got the blues scale with that E flat, but also. sharp and a uh, an F in it as well the result back to the one chord so let's just do that go sounds great so that kind of hopefully this will um, do a bit to uh, unlock this progression for you if you, like me, are frightened of diminished seventh chords. And of course, we can just play the diminished seventh. So we can just do that, right? So I'm just going. So A on F7, F sharp diminished. right? 
So that F sharp diminished. As, a, as an arpeggio, to me it sounds a little bit more gypsy jazz. I think that Django likes his diminished arpeggios. And the interesting thing is, is you can now use that chord, understanding the whole thing about the F minor, and also understanding that the F minor is also linked to G7. This is an extra step. You can now start to realize that all of these chords going back to one, be they G7, G7 flat 9, F minor, B flat 7 sharp 11th, um, F sharp diminished 7th, E flat diminished seventh going to C slash E. Which, oh, you see all of these progressions. They might sound like a lot of names, but you see all of these progressions in standards, right? All of these passing chords, these diminished minor sixths, um, sevenths, sevenths which raised elevenths, all these things, they're all just passing chords getting back to the tonic. And actually, you can swap any of them out for each other. So if I was going to play, maybe for example, Autumn Leaves, the first bit, if I wanted to go a bit more daring with my harmony, I could do this. I could go... Let's play E flat over the top of C, so C minor, because it sounds nice. And then we're going to go... And because I'm hearing that bass line... Let's do the same thing here. It doesn't quite work so well in minor, you'll notice. Again, you know, I can reverse that around, go one, two, three, four. So what I did there is I was playing the kind of on F minor going into, sorry, E flat minor going into B flat. It's probably easier if I talk about degrees. So you can substitute, basically what I'm saying is you can substitute these four one moves, four sharp, four one, and four, four minor, one. You can substitute the two five ones as well, and they sound brilliant. You know, um, basically there's no rules. The passing chords, as long as they serve their function of passing, can be as dissonant as you like, and you can use whatever dissonance you want to spice it up. And that's really kind of freeing and interesting. Um, and it's something really I just learned by observing the lines of people like Charlie Parker, Lester Young, Sonny Rollins, Dexter Gordon, Charlie Christian, so on and so forth. And that's the freedom that you can have when you play from uh, one chord to the other. But really, most of the time, you're just navigating from one, four, five, maybe in a major key, maybe in a minor key, sometimes to a dominant, like two, seven, two dominant, or six dominant. But very often, you're just kind of going from one chord to the other, and you can use whatever movement you like to get there, which I think is quite fun. So that's the thing, the, the gateway, in, or the thing that was the gateway into. It was the strange new land, or whatever, that, that the, uh, the F-sharp diminished seventh chord that so confused me was able to lead me into. And I hope you find this video interesting, even if perhaps you didn't quite get all of what I had to say. This is quite far-reaching. At least you'll know that on a F, F sharp diminished C chord, you can play F, F7, F major, F minor, or even a 2-5-1 lick, and it will sound good. I promise you, as long as you resolve strongly into that one chord. Anyway, I hope you find that useful. Thanks for watching. Bye.